My uh, goal today, what I want to accomplish, I want to explain the way I see all-ball screen defense. All-ball screens in the modern basketball, and when I'm talking about modern basketball, I'm talking 24-second shot clock basketball, are not, not that anymore used the way it used to be in the 30-second shot clock basketball when I began to play basketball. Today, they are used uh, more like a setup for the pick and roll and the one-on-one -on -one situation, and the pick and roll and the one-on-one -on -one situations are the stuff that today in basketball coaches us most worried how to defend. And also, they are used sometimes in combination with them, but overall, you know, they are not using them anymore like they used to do it. So many coaches, they are not even paying attention on that. They are focused on transition defense, on one-on-one -on -one defense, on pick and roll defense, and they are not even worried too much about this. Uh, I'm going to try to, to explain to you guys my vision how to defend that. Uh, to be able to talk, for me, to explain easier uh, what kind of defense we can use, I'm going to divide these oboe screens in the two groups. I'm going to divide these oboe screens in the first group when the player is going from the outside toward inside using oboe screen. And in this case, we can talk about flex screen, about shuffle screen, or in this case here, UCLA screen. This is one group of the screens. The other one is the group of the screens when the player is going from inside toward outside using oboe screen. And in this case, we are talking in the zipper, in this angle, pin down. In this angle, or we are talking about wide pin down. My terminology could be different than the one which you're using, but this is the way I learned when I was in the, in the States. Also, when we're talking about oboe screens, we are talking about two basic different philosophy how to defend all ball screens and how to defend all stuff in the basketball. Number one is the defense per scouting. It's meaning that we are seeing what the other team is doing and that we are trying to defend every single thing from the other team by the scouting. And the second one is the one that what I call defense of the unified rules. We have a one defensive system with the unified rules while working for the all situations with a little adjustment of the scouting in the situation that we need. In this kind of the system, each part of the system is connected to the other part and depending to the other part. When I begin to work, you will understand what I'm talking about. Also, in this kind of the system, there are a lot of coaches who are going to tell you, all ball screen is a question of the guy who is screening and question of the guy who is using screen. No. In this philosophy, anything in the basketball, anything what you defend is a question of the five players. And we are defending all situations with the five players. In this kind of philosophy, I believe, and this is what I'm going to try to explain uh, today. Uh, how many of you guys here coach uh, young kids? Please lift your hands up. So as usually in the clinic like this, the people who teach the kids, they are on the most number who are coming to learn and listen. And this kind of philosophy is especially important on the level when you're supposed to teach kids how to play correct defense. And this kind of philosophy you can apply for the kids all the way to the senior basketball, but in the senior basketball with the little touches of the scouting. It's meaning we know our system, we are defending 90% of the stuff with our system, and when we see something what is not defendable by our system, we're going to use touches of the scouting. Now, we are, div we are uh, beginning uh, work on this kind of the system always in the small number, is meaning we want to use an uh, oboe screen <clears throat> to begin to work. One passer without defense 
one screener without defense and the two guys using oboe screen. In the, that's a one against one oboe screen. In this kind, we are basically practicing more uh, individual techniques and tactics how to pass the screen. I don't have time today to go through that, so we will jump to three against three. Second thing will be here, introduce one screener, one guy who used the screen, and the one passer. It will be two against two. The next step will be three against three. I'm gonna go three against three, so I can explain exactly what I wanna explain. To be able to go to the all ball screens, I need to take one step back. I need to go to the defensive triangle. If I want to just to talk in the details about defensive triangle, it will take me another clinic. But I need to touch this because I need to explain to you guys exactly what kind of the defense we want to play. We want to play aggressive defense. The, we want, the way we want to play aggressive defense, what we want to do, we want to always have pressure on the ball and the pressure on the line of the pass. A little more. Now, again, by the my terminology, I'm going to explain what I call open triangle and what I call closed triangle. Most of you guys in your team, not all of you guys in your team, let me do it. Let me do it, just move over there. You guys are using this kind of stance, what is open triangle. In the defense, when we are not waiting for other team to make mistake, but we are, we are, we are forcing team to make mistake, we want to pressure on the ball, and we want to pressure the line of the pass. So this is what I call close triangle. Common mistake, what people make in the close triangle is this. This is not triangle, okay? I'm stuck to my man, and I cannot help in the case of the drive. Position in the triangle is the same, except I'm not open. I'm close, the way coach before, excellent, explain it, how to use the technical ability to be on the line of the pass. Now, one more important thing and the basic thing of this defense, it's a maintain my correct position in the defense, depending of the my man and of the ball, doesn't matter in the what position you find yourself, because that position gonna permit you always to react correctly. And that's always for the one thing what coach said before, where I'm agree 100%, make a thing simple. Weaker, th weaker team, simplest things. The way you go more up in the scale, you can put more complicated stuff. Here, in this, what I'm trying to explain, that's why I'm saying you can explain from the kids' age to the senior basketball. Maintain the thing simple. He's on the line of pass, he's on the line of pass, okay? They are not stuck to their men. They are in the correct triangle. Move the ball. Okay? Every time when ball move position, we move position. It's a simple stuff that all you guys know. But we fly, uh, there are one old coach that I hear him say, ball fly, you fly. Whenever the man, whenever ball changes the position, you're supposed to change your position. Keep on moving. Okay, maintain, hey, maintain for the one second more ball every time when you receive. Everything is beginning with the pressure on the ball. Pressure on the ball, pressure on the line of pass, the last man on the weak side protecting uh, weak side. Keep on moving. Every time the ball is released, we are exchanging position. Okay. This is a kind of the triangle that we want to, that we want to play. Now I'm going to explain it also. They can be connected for the old ball screen what happens when we begin to drive? Pressure the ball, maintain the triangle, let's go, begin to drive. We are faking and coming back. We are faking and coming back. Faking and coming back. Faking and coming back. Faking and coming back. Okay, so even we are not in the open triangle position, we are in the closed triangle position, we are still faking, helping the driver, and we are going back to our position. Okay. Now when we touch this triangle defense, I can move to the off-ball screen defense and explain exactly what we want from each player. We're going to explain the first group, what is a group when the player is going 
from under the rim toward the outside. In this case, it's going to be pinned down. Okay, we are beginning from ball here. Everything begins with activity and pressure on the ball. If the player is staying like this, capable of seeing everything without pressure on the ball, doesn't matter what you do with the rest of it, it's still going to be difficult to steal the ball or force them to make the mistake. You're supposed to force this guy on the ball not to be comfortable, exchange position of the ball, he's supposed to be worried about this ball. Perfect example of the, the people who do that is American team here in, the, in this championship. This guy is on the line of pass. This guy, this guy is on the weak side. We are passing the ball, adjusting position, okay? And now he's gonna begin to move, okay? Stop, stop. Always going with the same basic uh, rule. That's maintaining triangle. He's moving down. He's maintaining close triangle on the line of pass. He's the first one on the line of pass. Okay, let's talk about this guy going closer to the rim. The way this guy is going closer to the rim, triangle cannot be same wide. He's going closer to the rim. His man is last next to the rim. There is no help behind. It's mean the distance between him and his man supposed to be more narrow because there is no help. So when this guy come in this position, he is still in the triangle, close triangle, but much closer to him because there is nobody behind. This guy is last. Okay, now. Let's talk about this player. Responsibility, now we are already to all ball screen. Responsibility of this guy. Pressuring the ball and the change in position when ball changes position. Also, what I'm gonna explain later on, this guy is responsible for the wide curl. When the player with the ball does the wide curl, he's gonna be responsible. Uh, let me do this part. Responsibility of this guy is maintain my position in the triangle. It's not this, it's this, okay? Leaving the space here, seeing over my shoulder the ball and the man and being ready to do the step out at the moment of the screen. Always being more worried about ball, who is most important man on the court. This guy, second most important, and not watching and not being that much, that much attention on this guy. That's the responsibility of this guy. Also, when he comes out, go, and receive the ball, being in this position, give me perfect position to do this. I'll try to receive the ball. So I'm in perfect position to go directly on the three quarter. If I'm behind here, playing defense like this, and he receives the ball, I'm always last stand behind. And we said that we want to play aggressive defense where we will not let people move the ball or receive the ball. Go back. You go under him. Now I'm sure this is, uh, this is the, what you're going to have the most questions about. 90% of the coaches here they say you follow. If you follow, you break uh, defensive triangle. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, you cannot get to the line of pass. For, so what I choose, I'm choosing going through for two purpose, simple reasons. Number one, to be able to get to, easier to the line of pass. And number two, because that way you keep always your defensive triangle. And you keep always things simple, especially for the kids, really important. We always begin preseason or uh, on the beginning, when you have a full team, the people who have a lot of national team players, they cannot do that because they begin late. But on the beginning, when you have all the players, you begin to teach them, first of all, this defense, going through, because it's our main defense and because it's really difficult to execute. It's not that easy to execute like it's the defense when you're following. Later on during the season, when you see that your player, players are accepting this kind of defense, you can introduce option. You can introduce option following. Why we introduce option following? Because for every defensive action, there is an answer offensively. And obviously, on this defense also, 
there are things what orphans can do to punish it. So you're supposed to have uh, two options. And if you are in a really good team, and you have a really long time in the one team, you can get to the point to leave the players to choose on their own, on their own option, going through or following. Switching in all both screens, we are using like a last option. Don't, this is my uh, personal opinion, if you let players switch, players always go either way. And they will always end up switching every time. So yes, switching is good, but switching is the last resource, last thing what you want to do. Okay? If we follow here, also, following is good defense. When I took uh, Basconia, this team, I didn't go with this defense. I went with the following. I went with the following because you don't need to practice that much. Players will not make that many mistakes, and they pick it up quickly. But it's not that effective to play aggressive defense like this defense is. This is the first screen. So he will go through. He will try to be on the line of the pass. At the moment of the pass, if he cannot steal the ball or deny, he will get in the correct position. He will adjust his position and the way. Now, he is the last man here. He is going to be in the three quarter defending low post. Who is making, you will see when we start to go quicker, who is making most mistakes here? These guys. Or if small men is screening for the big man, they do make a lot of mistakes because it takes a lot of work to keep a defensive triangle when your man is constantly sending the screen and the moving. So a lot of time, what you're going to see later on, big guys, they're afraid. They don't change position. Turn around, turn around. So they stay like this. So in this case, if you want to go through, watch over there. This is double screen. So the space in between and maintain, maintain position in the correct triangle is really important. Also, giving option of uh, following, it makes us less predictable on the end of the season. But I'm repeating again. We need to teach players one basic defense. And then you can teach alteration. If you're changing every day, players get, 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 players get confused and they start to trust in the things what they're doing. Okay, now. I explain the screen when he's going from under the rim toward the outside. Now I'm going to explain when he's going inside. He's having the ball, pressure the ball, pressure the line of pass, passing the ball. Go, stop, stop. Adjust position. When he ball change, he's supposed to change his position. The way he changes his position, he's going to pass the ball, pass the screen exactly in his defensive triangle. Send the screen. Okay, stop. Now let's talk about this. He's going to go over because his defensive triangle make him go over. That's the first thing. Second thing, but this guy, he can choose. I go under or I go over. He's choosing where he wants to use the screen. So, now I'm going to talk about ACB rules. I don't know rules where you guys are coaching, but I tell you what ACB rules said. Spanish league. Ball is here. Go back. Okay. This guy is defending, this guy who is ascending the screen. If we draw the line like this, over toward the ball, you can do body check. No foul. Line here, under, you do the body check, foul. I don't know if it's in the league where you coach it like this. I'm telling you, when I was coaching, it's this way. So, how are you going to play with that? If he goes under, he's going to pass over. Everything big with the pressure on the ball. This guy going to get open. He's going to go back. He's going to recover because he's under the rim, already in the, in the triangle where he's close. Go back. If he choose to go over, he's still doing sending, going over. He's going to do body check. Give one second of the time for this guy. Keep going. 
to recover and catch this guy. Body check, set the screen. Set the screen to our day. Body check, supposed to be done in the level of the screen, not lower, for the two reasons. Number one, so you can go back quicker to your man, and number two, because if this guy gets, catches at the high speed, and you bump him when he's moving quickly, probably they're gonna call a foul. The same way I explained to you before, option of following to be less predictable for the scouting on this kind of the screen, now I'm going to explain you one of the choices, of the many choices, what you can do if you're defending somebody, let's say, who is playing above the rim and they throw the ball to you, or somebody who is a three man, excellent low post player, so you want to make sure that he is not receiving ball on the low post or that his uh, reception is difficult. Now we are talking about, if you go back on the stuff that I said at the beginning of this, one defensive rules, unified rules with the little touches of the scouting. For the younger teams who you're coaching, little touches of scouting, they come in the end of the season when you are, the, the, when you are uh, fighting for a uh, state championship or something like this. For the senior stuff, you need to begin earlier because you're going to find on the other side, offense, they will force you to do that. We always ask people to maintain the triangle. Like I say, this is a question of scouting, so we need to break that rule. I will not jump with the ball. When he received the ball, I will move this side. I will send this guy toward the screen. I will make sure with the contact, send him here, because I don't want him to go down, because if he's above the rim player, they might throw the alley -oop. number one thing. Number two thing, if he is going down here, it's much easier to gain position in the paint than if he's, if he's not moving with the contact. So we will send this guy over. He will make sure that he does the body check. At, at the moment, we want to body check closest as possible to this line. At the moment of the body check, me, from this side, I'm going to move to that side. Keep going. And I want to come to this position to be able to defend people on the low post. If this guy, we consider that he's a huge threat in the paint. Now I explain the first group, I explain the second group. Quicker, pressure the ball, pressure the ball, let's go. Pass through the screen, let's go, stop, stop. It's not a problem of ball screen, but it's a problem that the players in most of the cases, they are not used to it, to change the position when ball is a change in position. So it's not only a question to defend the old ball screen, but it's a question to defend in penetration, pick and roll, low post. Whatever you defended, you're supposed to move, a ball is moving. So when this guy passes ball to him, you need to move. Okay? Go from the beginning. So we need to go. You cannot start. Do this. If you didn't go through the shell drill, if you didn't go from the, from the drill, what I did on the first one. Every time a ball moves, you move. That's the first one. Let's go. See the ball. Good job. Good job. Stop. Stop. You're supposed to move when ball is moving. Did you move? Go again. One more. One more. So this is common mistake. I went. Stop for one second. I came here this morning at 8. I came here this morning at 8, do this stuff with them, because I know that there are not many coaches who are doing basic stuff. And that's ball moves, you move. Your player move, you adjust position. So simple stuff, basic stuff. Let's go. Good job. Keep it up. Good job. Adjust position. Good job. Okay, stop. Okay, this is correctly how it's supposed to be done. Good job, guys. Okay, now we're going to exchange position. We're going to put new two big guys in. And we're going to do different kind of the screen. Always defending on the same way. We are, I'm, I will not try to use the scouting. I'm using basic rule. Let's go. Okay, good job. Let's try to do now one more time, but with the curling. Help me and translate the curl, please. Stop, stop, stop. 
Hacek, let's go. Do it with Hacek. Okay, stop. Now, like I said at the beginning, let's talk about responsibility in the curve because it's very easy. This guy comes here, he don't go nowhere, and it's very easy to defend. There are two guys who are responsible to help and go back on the curve. One, have the ball. Stay here. Okay, let's say that for whatever reason this guy is late. Okay, he's getting the ball. Pass the ball. Drive. He's supposed to jump from the ball, that's the first thing. That's a wide curl, if he goes wide. If he goes narrow, or he goes even without the ball, that's a big guy who is staying. Come here, set the screen. Step out for one sec, please. Pass the ball. Do it again. Slowly. Polako. Get the ball. Curl. Let's go. If he goes close, it's me, faking and going back. If he goes wide, it's him. Faking and going back. Now you will ask, well, if he make extra pass, I said that any situation, the basketball is supposed to be defended with the five players. Here you have the next player who he is faking, drive and pass the ball. Drive. Let's go. Pass the ball. So anything what you do in the defense is defended with the five players. Individual responsibility but team defense with the five players. Same thing again, let's go. Now a little bit quicker. Try to score now, try to score. Good job, offense, defense, offense, defense. Now try to steal the ball. Try to be on the line of the pass and try to steal the ball. Listen to the coach down there. Tell them. Offense, defense, try to steal the ball. We are on the line of the pass. Now we are playing to steal the ball. Defense all the way. Let's go. Stop. Did you understand what I said? We are, we are playing aggressive defense because we want this. We want either steal the ball, we don't want him to receive, or we want him to receive here. Okay, we, be, we began from this. This is a close triangle. This is what we're doing. Let's go. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, now I'm going to go into something that doesn't have nothing to do with all ball screens. If you want to be on the line of the pass, avoid the contact. Don't let the office make a contact with you. Let me do it for one second. If I want to be here on the line of the pass, one thing that I cannot do is uh, let this guy make a contact because he wants, to, when you teach the players how to get open, make a contact. So what I want to do, not let him make a contact. Be on the line of pass, go. And always move, avoiding the contact, this, be on the line of pass. Okay, let's try. Go back. Go back. Put pressure on the ball so he's not comfortable with the ball. Number one thing, okay? Number two thing, you're supposed to be on the line of the pass as much you can do it so this is not happening. Let's go. Good job. Let's go. See the ball. See the ball all the time. Let's go. Good job. Stop. Did you see two big guys? Who is having more trouble to do this kind of stuff are the big guys because they are not used to it, to maintaining all the time correct triangle. Okay. Now, we're going to move to the situation four against four, where we're going to see the mixture, the mix group of the different kind of the all ball screens. Let's go. Let's begin with the diamond. We can invent any kind of the drill to practice this once when you go four against four, five against five. You go from easier to the more complicated. But you always need to begin, like I said before, one against one, two against two, three against three. And that's when you already previously did shell drill, when you already previously did your triangle drills in the line of the pass, like a drill that coach did before. 
Now, in this kind of the case, we're going to go in the diamond drill. He can choose any sign that he wants, slowly. OK, so we have one old ball screen, pass the ball. Second one, back screen, second old ball screen, go. Pass, pass, stop. One more old ball screen, shuffle. Go back. And then we have a stagger for this guy coming out. Let's go. Adjust with the dribble. Okay, this is what we're going to defend right now. Let's go walk through a stop every time on each oboe screen so we can explain it exactly what we're doing. Stop. Adjust position, be on the line of the pass. Slowly, slowly, let's go. Okay, stop. He's trying to be on the line of pass. He's getting his three quarter. He's jumping toward the ball. He's the last man on the weak side. And he's directly on the middle of the court. Keep it going. On the line of the pass here, okay? He jump with the ball, he gonna pass over. He gonna open up for the one second. He's going to put pressure on the ball so he cannot see clearly that pass. Keep it going. Going back on the line of pass. Going back on the line of pass. Jumping with the ball. Passing through. Okay. Stop. This guy's on the low post. We need to be on the three quarter. Okay. And now he's going to use the stagger. Going through. He's doing step out. Pressuring the ball. Receiving the ball. Jumping with the ball. Okay. Now let's go quicker. Okay, stop. Okay, now let's go do quicker. You can score anytime you want. Try to steal the ball. Try to be aggressive. Put pressure constantly on the line of the, on the, on the ball and the line of pass. See the ball, big guy, see the ball all the time. Good job, that's it. Again. Good job, that's what we want. Hey, big guys, who are you supposed to watch? I know it's difficult because you are focused on this guy because I told you that he gonna send the screen, okay? But he might also send the screen for you. So you be focused on him, on him, and maintain your defensive triangle. Let's go. Stop, stop, stop. Why are we playing this defense? Why we don't play defense when we everybody stay in the zone? Why are we playing this defense? So sprint, like coach before I explain you, sprint and go on the line of pass. Let's go. Good job. Good job. Good job now. Let's go. Let's go. Good job. Good job. OK. Offense, defense. Let's go. Everything begins with the pressure on the ball, pressure the line of the pass, and the correct position in the triangle. See the ball. See the ball. Let's go. Good job. Let's go. Good job. Let's go. Press the ball. Press the ball. Good job. One more time. Let's go. Good job. Good job. Good job. That's it. Okay. Now, obviously, this requires a lot of work. And like I said before, all part of the, this defensive system, what you need to build yourself and think yourself how you don't do it, is depending one to another. You cannot do it like you saw yesterday, blue defense and make people stay on the line of pairs. It doesn't work together. Everything's supposed to be connected. You're supposed to have a clear idea. Are you want to play aggressive basketball, 
pressuring the ball and forcing people to make mistakes, or are you well going to make a basketball, depending on your team, who going to stay back and wait for team to make mistake? Okay, let's, for, let's go for the last situation. You remember the last one? Walk through again, slowly, Polako. Let's go. Stop. You need to jump every time. Ball change position, you change position. Go back, go back under the rim. Every time. No difference. Let's go. Good job. Okay. Back screen. Going for the big guy. Good job. Okay, stop. Pick to picker. Go again. Okay, stop. Now do it walk through and stop at the moment of the screen for the big guy. Slowly, guys, slowly, walking. Let's go. Okay, stop. Here we are having pick to picker. So we are having two all ball screens in a row, all in combination. So you will say, okay, if this guy helps, he cannot come out. So you say, okay, we need to know by the scouting which one is more important, which one is less important, so we can decide. No, we are following the same rule. One more thing about this rule. We are going menace by menace, threat by threat, danger by danger. First danger man with the ball, second danger my man, and the third danger is the first screen. That's the second screen. So first of all, I need to take care of this screen, and then if I'm late, like I said before, if I'm late and I have no other choice, I can switch. But first of all, we need to stop this. Let's go. Now let's go quicker. Stop. Like I said, I'm going to repeat one more time. Make sure if you do this, that the big guys, you are working with them more, or not big guys, but the player who is sending the screen. Because a lot of time, before you came to the point to you give the players option to follow, if they try to go through, if the man who is sending the screen is not in correct position, he's going to send the double screen, like happened right now. Go again. Stop! What is your position? You are not in the paint. You are first on the line of the pass. You are on the line of the pass. Let's go. Okay, stop. Thank you, guys. You did a great job. Come here. That was uh, every, everything from my side, how to defend the oboe screen. I'm open to any kind of the questions if you guys have. We're going to pass the ball, and we're going to send the screen this way. That's what you're asking. Flaring. Flare screen, to my knowledge, if you go to the senior basketball, depend if it's a screener over the three-point line or on the three-point line. If it's a screen on the three-point line, you're going to go over. If it's a screen over three-point line, you're going to go under. The big man always does, the big man or whoever is screening always does the same thing. Send the screen like this. Okay. This is the first man next to the ball. He's on the line of the pass. I'm the second one. I cannot be on the line of the pass. So I'm, I'm in my correct triangle position. Slowly use the screen. Okay. At the moment, now he's the choosing. On the three point line, I go over. Go back, go back. Screen here. I go under. And me, as a big guy in this case, at the moment of the screen, I open up to protect any kind of the curling behind. Okay, that's your question. But again, I'm going to repeat, I'm, I'm, I'm boring with this, but I know how much is important. That man over there, what is putting pressure on the ball, that's a 50% of the job done. 
if he's staying two meters behind and watching his man, okay, that's an easy pass. If he put in pressure on the ball, if he's supposed to be worried about control of the ball, he cannot make the pass easy. So it, for, in my knowledge, doesn't more, it's not that much important what you do, but it's important how you do it. Anybody more? Get to your correct position depending on the ball. If he begins to drive, who's supposed to stop the drive? You are the last man on the weak side, yes or no? So you're supposed to be under the rim. Okay. Now you have a situation where you cannot follow. So I'm saying no defense is perfect, but to be able to teach, to be able to teach easier, you need to make a decision what is your basic defense. And supposed to be connected with the other part of the defense. So if I want to always my last man on the weak side to be responsible, to help, and it's not always the five men or the four men can be two or three, he's supposed to be in the correct position. Because most of you guys here, I don't want to say nothing bad, you say, no, why, why we don't stay like this? Why we don't let them come out? Or why we don't stay like this? That's a scouting. I don't think so that you should teach kids or your team from the beginning to play this way. I think so that you should have a basic defense and after that, you should apply some changes because that's a much easier. It doesn't make players get confused. Uh, I need a one big man right here. I need a one shooter right here. And I need a one exterior player right here. Okay, let's begin from here. Let's always begin. By the way, this is uh, practical stuff. When I begin to play defense, I never don't want offense. You begin to drill. Three against three, four against four, five against five. I don't want to never begin like this. Because they use, you lose a lot of timing of the practice. Defense is having ball. He's the check in everybody the right place. I give the ball, I start. Let's go. Okay. He's having the ball. He's in the three quarter. He's denied the line of the pass. Pass the ball here. Jump. Now we are using the screen. Where do you want to go? Over here. Okay. He's opening up. He's passing. Go, go, go. The way he's going, getting closer. I need to get closer. Okay? Because I say, this position here without nobody behind, that's a bucket if you leave the space. He's under the rim. Now he's using again pin down. Like this. He doesn't, doesn't go all the way to the rim. And then goes back. Ah, he does the flare. He's the flaring to the corner. So he's coming here. And then he's going back. We need to always try to maintain triangle. Doesn't matter what. Doesn't matter what, we need to try and maintain triangle. You're asking me this. Come here. Watch me. Okay, I need you to do this. Are you asking me this? That's one of the options. Okay. But yeah, but what it does the, the center who is making the screen, you know, pivots and makes change another Change the screen. angle of the yeah. screen. Yeah, what if he changes screen. the angle of the screen? I always said, any kind of defense you do is not perfect, and it's having the time when you're supposed to use following, op uh, uh, following choice. Do you remember on the beginning that I said that you should teach going through, and then when your players apply that, you need to make option going through because there are situations that you cannot defend going through. If I'm coach, if I'm offense, and they want to go through, from this level of the screen, you move screen up, you change the angle, and you look for this. Okay? So that's the way you attack this kind of defense. So that way, when you see that something like this is happening, you need to apply the option of the following. That's why I said before 
that you are not predictable for the scouting of the other team. But again, I'm going to go back again. Don't begin mixing one and another. Make sure, explain to the players, this is our basic defense. Okay? And then you can, you can give it little by little the other options. Because if not, they're going to get confused. If they will not do the basic defense good, if they will not do any defense good. Is that it? Looks like. If so, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mat. Thank you, guys. Mr. Tabak.